with a big smile on her face. This Monday on Cocktail Network Live, watch One Drink With. Candid conversations with bottle flipping and shaker spinning cocktail creators from around the world. From Las Vegas to New York, London to Japan, what happens behind bars gets shared here. 
starring Dean Cernils and Rob Husted. This week we share one drink with Olya Sabanina. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Welcome to One Drink With. My name is Dean Cernils. We have an absolutely fabulous show planned this Monday night. And we couldn't do it without my special guest, co-host, Rob Husted. Oh, Dean, you make me feel like a rock star every time that interaction. Thank you, my friend. And again, this show could be done with all what you do behind and in front of the camera at the same time. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop. That's why I'm not looking at the camera, because I'm looking down and I've got all these other things going on. So, uh Really love how this show is, is evolving and growing together. Um, for those of you just tuning in, I actually started this show with uh, my co-producer, Allison, I don't know, during COVID. Uh, we were trying to figure it out in a basement in my old house, and we were just kind of playing with it uh, like everybody was back in the day. And, uh, and Rob and I got together beginning of this year and said, hey, let's make this show even bigger and better. And, and it has led to all kinds of other things that we're going to share with you later on. Uh, during today's show and to meeting one of my idols in the Instagram world, uh, our guest today. So uh, I don't want to go on about her just yet. So we'll talk later. Uh, but first of all, hi Rob, how are you, man? Ah, Dean, pretty good. It's been uh, been a been a rough week in the middle of this transition of moving right now. Slowly right. piecing together the studio. It's so hopefully cool. by next week we'll some, some bigger changes. But uh, we're you know we're. Uh, we're getting there. So this is uh, Rob's new studio. It, it, it looks really awesome, man. I love it. You got some you FBA got awards up too. there. It says hi, Dean. Oh, I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured every show I write something different on there to kind of make it like an ongoing joke. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I love it. I love it a lot. Uh, all right. Now, something we've been forgetting about is to ask anybody watching the show to please like and subscribe and share and all those things we are working to build the community together that's what rob and i are doing right now we're not trying to go on youtube so that we can make tons of money from youtube because we all know that that's 400 million hours from now um we are here to, to grow the community we're trying to bring uh great flair bartenders and great bartenders on the show to talk about how how the uh the industry has influenced them and grown their careers and we want to get more people involved in it. So that's why we're here. So please, like, subscribe, share, and watch. Your views are very important. So when we talk to sponsors, we can't do this without your views. Rob? Agreed. And and with the sponsor's help, we can do more, bring the show on the road, do it from live events, and keep sponsoring these online cocktail competitions like Jenna Marmaduke won last week. Absolutely. So every week or every month we want to have a cocktail competition so we can start sending sponsor money out into the world. Start sending out to different bartenders and all the competitions. Rob has an awesome competition coming up. Uh, Rob, I'll let you tell everybody about that coming up uh, at the end of September. And you have to be there. Uh, we're going to tell you why in a couple minutes as well. Perfect. I agree. Uh, but Dean, you know, this show is called One Drink With. Why don't you uh, kick us off? Because I'm feeling a little thirsty. That brings us to this. All right. One Drink With Mixology. That means I got to get my chair out of the way. It's uh, Mixology. One Minute Mixology. Rob and I have one minute to make a drink. Today's my drink is with new vodka, and that's all I'm telling you yet. Here we go, one minute mixology. The premise, of course, of one drink with is to make a drink with my buddy Rob. I have some Blackberry Real. I'm thinking fall is just a couple of days away, uh, and... Oh, this has to be done with some flair. Oh, oh yeah! Oh. All right, a little bit of new vodka with some blackberry real. I'm gonna stir that up to break down the sugars. Now I'm bringing in a grapefruit hefeweizen. Hefeweizen, hefeweizen. 
I like saying it with a bit of an accent. All right. Now I'll stir that just a little bit to get all that great blackberry flavor and the real blackberries mixed into the beer. All right. I got two seconds. It's going to be delicious. There it well is. Well done, buddy. Hefeweizen. Nice. Looking good there. All right. Oh, it's over. Oh, it's so <laughs> delicious. You know, the, the Real and, uh, and Finest Cold go so great with these beers. And the grapefruit from the Hefeweizen just makes this a perfect uh, a perfect fall cocktail. And, of course, it works with all the Reals. You ready, mister? I'm going to have to be. Set us up, man. Cool. Um, so I apologize in advance because, I've been, like I said, I've been moving all week. So my arms are stiff. So I'm a little nervous about uh, about flaring, but we're gonna we're gonna make this work one way or another. But you this cocktail, guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> this cocktail uh, is called the um, Spice Tropical Itch. Now, the Tropical Itch was first introduced to me by Jeff Beach Bumberry down at the Miami Rum Congress, utilizing some great rums, some uh, Real, and some other stuff you'll see. But I kind of put our twist on this which we unveiled at the Cocktail Art Challenge 3, and it was a big hit with uh, everyone in the audience. So I'm like, why not share this recipe with our viewers today, Dean? So for the Tropical Itch, I'm going to start off with one ounce what? of Plantation Dark. Maybe just an ounce and a smi oops, smidge more. And we're going to do one ounce each of uh, Finest Gold Single Press Lime, Plantation Three Star White Rum, and then one ounce of Mango Real. So if you notice, everything has been equal parts, one ounce, one ounce, one ounce. And then for the spice aspect, we're going to use just a quarter ounce of tahini sauce. Most of you guys know tahini for the rim like on this, but we're actually going to make a sauce, which is amazing, for adding just a little bit of spice, a little bit of depth and umami to a cocktail. I'm going to strain that right over our glass with ice, already pre rim with the tahini salt, garnish with the lime wheel. Dean, Sir Nails! <laughs> the tahini dream right there! <laughs> Woo! That, nice was, uh, that was moving quick there. Yeah. Um, sure, buddy. Congratulations. Good to you. Good to you, sir. Cheers. One drink with Rob and Dean. Mmm. Delicioso. All right. So I promised that we were going to tell you guys a little bit about uh, what Rob and I have cooking up again with the whole entire project to bring our community back together again. Um, Rob and I have been working on that for many years together. Uh, probably 20 plus years kind of thing keeping this whole thing rolling we had great successes uh in the early 2000s with the great flair bartending rise and because of deborah richards being on the show of one drink with rob and i have gotten together with deborah richards and patrick Wirtz. if you haven't heard already we are making a documentary about the art uh of flair bartending and bartending in general uh, the rise, fall, and resurgence of flair bartending. Let me take you over to our uh, screen here. Again, folks, please, we can't do any of this without you. We can't build a community on our own. We need the community support. We need you to jump in. Worst case scenario, you can't do it. You, you, you don't have the extra funds right now. We know time is tight. Drop your email into this website for us. Shakenandstirredthemovie.com. All we need is your email to prove to distributors and future investors that we have an audience. Uh, and that way you'll also get first notice of what's going on out in the world. Uh, and and just you just got to join us, all right? Um, that and watch our shows too. Then if you do have a couple of bucks and you want to buy us a round of drinks or something worth the value of a round of drinks, Go to Indiegogo. This is a crowdfunder for uh, indie movies, small movies, and put in shaken and stirred. Oh, you got to spell stirred correctly, though. All right. Shaken and stirred. Boom, boom. Here, 
it comes. There it is. There's a bunch of different options for different movies about shaken and stirred. The story of flair bartending. There it is. All right. This is shaken and stirred. The story of. Have you ever enjoyed something so much, something that you were so passionate about that you couldn't wait to share it with the rest of the world? Well, with your help, that's what we're trying to do right now. Flair bartending has been around since the late 1800s, and at some point, you've probably seen it yourself, whether it be on the big screen, while scrolling through social media, or at your favorite bar. My name is Rob Husted, and together with Dean Cerniels, we have over 60 plus years tending bar, organizing events, and bartending competitions. As industry leaders through Cocktail Network Live, the United States Bartenders Guild, and the new Flair Bartenders Association, we're excited to announce a new project, a new team in mind, all with our ultimate goal to serve the world's bartending community. Rob and I are also producers of Shaken and Stirred, a documentary that will showcase our dynamic and competitive art the art and craft of creating amazing cocktails with flair. Our producers and Emmy award-winning director are legends in the bar industry, and our cast of storytellers are even cooler. Join us in telling the stories of those that drew the craft to $100,000 purses and the dramatic crash that almost wiped it all out. From watching the movie Cocktail to participating today, you can be part of the resurgence. We want you to be part of helping tell this amazing story. Join us for a round of drinks on Indiegogo. Get your name in the credits of our film or earn a trip to Las Vegas for the premiere. Please click through and help us show the world our incredible family and tell our amazing story from our community's point of view. And lastly, if you cannot help financially, please like, subscribe, and share this with your fellow bartenders and your groups. Our goal is to continue to strengthen our community. We're excited to see you at the premiere. Even better. We can't wait to see you on stage. There it is. There it is. So, uh... And a, a huge thank you to uh, to some of our big contributors. This past, just our past week alone, we're going to give a big shout out to our top six contributors. We have Randy McGuire, Anthony Hand, Zachary Lindsay, Tomoyo Yoshinaga, Zachary Moyes, and Cash Bourne. Nice. And uh, and I believe there's a Sean Brady shout out to put in there as well. Sean Brady from uh, uh, ABM, Finest Call in Real, one of our uh, one of our managers. Uh, made a big donation as well this week. Uh, I haven't got the update. We don't get the update until, to, uh, until uh, our next conversation with uh, with Deborah and uh, and Patrick. So there it is, guys. Please jump online. Go, uh, go tip us twenty bucks, twenty-five bucks. Put in a hundred dollars or whatever you can afford. Uh, it all goes towards helping to grow this community and helping to uh, to tell the world that we're out there and that we are the band's back together again. <laughs> well, and, and barproducts.com has uh, been a huge supporter of uh, for flair bartending competitions and cocktail competitions for a long time. Uh, at least for, for the Bar Wars comps. And um, in a full transparency, if you need bar tools and bar products is your place to shop, if you can, go to cocktailnetworklive.com forward slash shop and feel free to shop from there. It's it's all transparency. It's an affiliate link. So we do get a little kickback from there. But with those funds, help us generate and keep the lights on here in the Cocktail Network Live studio. Dean? Absolutely, guys. This, uh, this support that we've got with barproducts.com that it's not money going into Rob and I's pocket. That's money going into Cocktail Network Live and all the projects that Rob and I are working on. Again, those projects are bartending competitions, be it cocktail events uh, or live competitions. Everything that we're doing and going into the 2023, 4, 5, and 6 uh, starts here. So if you're shopping at all for any bar products, check out the link either below in the description or at uh, Cocktail Network Live. All right? Thank you very much, guys. Uh, moving on, Mr. Rob, are you ready for our big guest? I think so. We, we, we talked about the, uh, the the competition aspect. We'll talk about that more at the end of the show. But let's give him a little tease of something our guest did at our previous competition together back in June.
but. Please put your hands together for Olia Sabanina. Olia, how are you? Hi, I am fine. How are you guys? We are doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Super excited to have you on the show. Amazing. Thank you for having me. So, um, let's start. Yeah, Rob. First of all, Olia, what are you drinking? Uh, actually, um, uh, I prefer wine, but today I drink tea. I'm drinking tea because um, uh, I still have COVID, and uh, that's why. Yeah. Ah, I'm so sorry. I hope you're getting through that okay. You're you're at the end of it though, right? Yeah, I'm recovering. So yeah, now it's perfect. So I'm almost <laughs> finishing this. It happened at a perfect time, awesome. right? <laughs> yes. Uh, good thing well, you do that. Yes, you're, uh, you're working the studio at home. <laughs> So you'll be ready for Rob's comp yeah. coming up in September then? Of course. Of course, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this. Because, you know, uh, this type of event is pretty, I don't know, like difficult or how to say. Because uh, there are few rounds, like a blind flare round and mixology round. And it's not typical for flare competitions. That's why it's pretty interesting for me. And it's kind of challenge. What do you see most as the as the biggest challenge? What's the biggest difference of these competitions versus a flare competition, as you mentioned? Yeah, uh, actually, the biggest difference is, um, I think, maybe blind lists because. Um, when you prepare to the typical flair competition, you know your program, you know your cocktails, and you know it's pretty easy, you know everything, and you just should discipline yourself and um, make your routines every day, and then you can go to the stage and uh, like perform. But this time you have blind lists, so you don't know what hap what happens there, and when you come to the stage, you still don't know, and when you're on the stage, only you know that's pretty interesting because you know it's like kind of challenge here as i said before right rob you wrote these rules man <laughs> yeah i agree it's uh this competition is is more intense and more involved than uh than typical flair competitions in the past and and i've said before this competition is one of the hardest competitions that i organized because of all the different rounds and it being a blind round um but I can give everyone a hint, which we're going to talk about more at the meet and greet uh, on Sunday, the day before the event. But look at past videos on YouTube, especially Dario's round, who's our guest next week, and watch what he did. But more importantly, yes, it's a blind round, but like this is uh, when, when Ken Hall used to do the working flare round inside Legends. And when I compete, this is what this kind of based off of is I would, it's still a blind working flare round, but I would have either routine one or routine two, and sometimes routine three for the, you know, different aspects of it, depending what drink list I pulled. So it's almost like putting together a qualifying and a finals round routine together in the same sense of a cool, if I get this drink, I'm doing this routine with this cocktail. If I get this drink, I'm doing this routine with this cocktail. And if you're smart enough to look, if you'll know your glassware ahead of time, because one drinks a rocks, one drinks a tall, one drinks a, uh, a coupe. So you can already set up your glass where you can start structuring stuff of like, oh, this isn't, as hard as I think it is. There's certain factors that I already know. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it looks much more like real work behind the bar, not right. like a performance, like real work. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what we were trying to get to, right, Rob? We're trying to get to, uh, you know, if you're doing flair behind a bar, what would it look like so that we can show the, the world out there just how, how cool it can look behind a real bar. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Go, Dolia. 
Uh, sorry, like maybe my sound uh, is a little bit uh, late. Uh, uh, yeah. That's why. What, yeah. uh, what, uh, what Dean said is exactly true is why we brought back this competition. Like we, Flair back in the day had, had a stigma, unfortunately, of, of stepping back in the bar and, and juggling like a monkey and making crap cocktails. And, you know, throughout the resurgence of Flair, when what the sponsors wanted and what, what, our, what our industry needed was making great cocktails again. And that's what we showed. And then now we're showing Flair isn't just putting on a showcase. Flair can be done behind the bar in a timely manner, making great cocktails in, in a real bar environment. So that's what this was. But enough about the competition. Let's move on to you. You have a great history in becoming a quick leader in our industry. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your bartending career, and what you're doing for uh, work now. Okay, so as you know, my name is Ola, and uh, I'm 30 years old, and I started my flair bartending career in Russia. It was almost uh, 11 years ago, I suppose, yes, 11 years ago, like such a long way, and um, my first two years, I was not like flair bartender, I was a mixologist, and I worked behind the bar without all of these tricks, but my colleague, uh, he was a flair bartender and you know I was so jealous all the time when I saw his tricks and I was like wow uh, one day I want to do the same but you know I didn't know uh, female flair bartenders I um, didn't know like uh, somebody who could teach me or something like that and um, one day I asked him like uh, can you please teach me a few tricks or something like that and he told me Yes, of course I can, but you know, he was a great flair bartender and the worst teacher in the world. Oh, man. He couldn't teach me flair. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt so clumsy. <laughs> I felt like I, I could do nothing. And uh, yes, that's why I was like, hmm, maybe it's a pretty good idea to find some flair bartending school and come there, you know. And yes, right. uh, I was lucky. Like uh, near my apartment, uh, there was very nice flair bartending school, uh, League of Bartenders, and um, I decided why why not? You know, like just ten minutes by walk from my apartment, and yes, um, I had a course there, and after that, I decided to stay there just to practice flair, and uh, my husband. Uh, he was a flare instructor there, actually. Ah. So, uh, yeah, that's so funny. So that brings uh, in a little piece so... of the puzzle. That's where you met Ivan, your husband, correct? Yes, correct. That's great. And you guys have done a bunch that's of competitions. He was happens. in that opening video, right? Uh, yes, yes, he was there. Uh, so yes, that's how I started my flair bartending career, and then uh, from 2015, I started to uh, participate in uh, flair competitions around the world. My first competition was in uh, Moscow, and my second in Belarus, and then in China. And when I was in China, wow. it was a um, really a very big competition, like huge. And I saw all of the flair stars like Alexander Shifanov, uh, Tomik Malek, Marek, uh, Bulachtin, all of them I saw there. And I saw a lot of beautiful, very professional female flair bartenders. And I was like, wow, I want to be the same, you know, I, I want to do the same. I, I want to be as cool as them. Yes, and that's why. So now I'm here. <laughs> that's how it started. Nice. And you you just mentioned a bunch of uh, past competition experience. Out of all your past competition experience, what's one of your favorite moments and why? Oh, actually, my favorite moment uh, was in London. Uh, it was a roadhouse competition, like a legendary competition, you, you know. And um, it was final, a roadhouse final in November. And uh, we've been uh, on the stage with Ivan. It was a tandem show, and um, it was the moment, funny moment, when he broke a um, sugar glass, sugar bottle uh, of my head. <laughs> uh, it was like a trick of the tandem, right. but uh, nobody, yeah, but nobody reali realized what happened. 
and everybody was like a what did you do like right now <laughs> it was so funny yeah i like that moment and we won that competition and it was so you know a lot of emotions so emotionally right. and um support of the crowd and uh, people around me my friends um, i like that time right. yeah it was the, the most amazing moment i had that video lined up as your intro video uh, before i found the one that we used uh, and, and yeah, that bottle gets smashed and all the broken bits of sugar bottle go into the DJ yes. behind them and he's freaking out. Yes. It's pretty fun. Yeah, um, poor DJ. My apologies. Exciting. Very exciting. Now, Olya, you talked about um, going to that competition in Japan and having uh, a lot of female flair bartenders in Japan. Uh, that's something I don't know a whole lot about. Can you share? Well, uh, share that experience and, and the excitement of going there? Yeah, actually, it was not in Japan. Uh, I've never been to Japan. Oh. Uh, it was in China. China, sorry. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, no worries. And uh, yeah, uh, I first time I, I saw there a lot of beautiful, very nice, professional female flair bartenders. Uh, and most of them uh, were actually from Japan, as you said. Uh, and um, and that moment, uh, you know, I've uh, realized that uh, female flair bartending is real. You know, uh, we can do um, we can do our best, and we can we can beat guys sometimes. I think um, yeah. maybe some of girls they think that it's impossible, but I don't think so. I think it's all about discipline. It's all about maybe power, about your passion. And um, I don't know, you, you know, Sylvia Daniela Street, she is great. Or I don't know, a lot of flair bartenders from Japan, all of them are, are great. I know one girl from Taiwan, uh, and uh, actually she's like one of the most professional uh, flair bartenders around the world. I mean, not from female flair bartender, from, from flair bartending uh, at all. And uh, if um, uh, sh she didn't uh, participate a lot in uh, European competitions, because it's pretty hard uh, to come from Taiwan to Europe, it's, it's very expensive, you know, and so it's a long way. But uh, if she would like to come, I don't know, maybe in future, I think she will beat all of guys, really. Right. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm sure. There's because no she's reason amazing. why not. Uh, you know, flair is not a. Uh, it's not about lifting the heaviest weights. There's no reason. You know, it's more of a dance on the stage than anything. And I don't see any reason why women can't beat the the best of the guys out there. There's there's nothing holding us holding anybody back from competing. Um, why do you think that there's not as many female flair bartenders in in North America? or even Europe as much as, as China? Um, actually, for me, this is a secret. I, I, I don't uh -huh. know, because the flair bartending was born in America. And uh, now, right. when I came to USA, um, I realized that um, there are not a big community here and not uh, a lot of male flair bartenders. And uh, like few three or four female flair bartenders it's really like little amount and uh actually i have no idea why it's happening and um i i want to see more flair bartenders and especially female flair bartenders in future because i believe that female flair bartenders um can be really great absolutely i think uh, i think the the finesse that female bartenders bring to the stage is something that the, the guy bartenders can, can learn from. Uh, I think a lot of the guy bartenders are so fixated on big move after big move after big move that there's no finesse and smoothness of motion and, and, and uh, celerity of motion that like you bring in the, in the opening videos. Uh, your presence on stage is absolutely stunning and your control of the tools is is second to none. I think it's amazing. Uh, and then you also have these huge, big tricks, but you slide them in much more, uh, much more smooth than anybody else. I think it's great. 
Uh, thank you so much. Really, I appreciate that. But um, actually, I don't think that I am like greatest player bartender. It's absolutely not. And uh, I know that my level is not so high. But um, I'm trying to put more, you know, like more performance, uh, more, um, I don't know, like more like dances move or something like right. that uh, to my performance, uh, not only flair. And um, I know a lot of flair bartenders who are much more better than me. And um, I respect this. Uh, I respect uh, that they practice a lot and train a lot. But my way is a little bit another way. Um, I prefer to put more creativity to my performance and uh, I think it's not bad, you know, we are all different and um, sometimes it's good to see really different performances and really different styles, uh, styles of flair bartending. Uh, I agree. Now, <clears throat> what Dean alluded to earlier, your videos stand out on social media tremendously from all the hard work and effort that you put together and, and then Ivan helping out as well. It's great to see him sometimes pop in the videos and his videos are amazing as well. But share with us some of the secrets to uh, successful social media and showcasing having more fun behind the bar that you've learned. Yeah, uh, actually, there is not a secret. And um... I started to do this um, two years ago. Actually, I started my Instagram blog five years ago, but um, it, um, it started growing two years ago uh, in the beginning of, of COVID. And uh, there is no secret, as I said before. Uh, first of all, uh, you should be creative. Uh, second, uh, you should, uh, you should uh, discipline this. I mean, like you should post a lot of content. It's very, very important. Sometimes people think uh, that, okay, I can post a few videos and um, uh, if it's not popular, it's not for me, but uh, it, it don't work like this. You should, uh, you should practice like in flare room, you know, uh, when you're in flare room, uh, you practice like a lot of hours every day uh, before to come to competition. Uh, all the same, if you want to be popular in social media, you should make a lot of content. And that's why it's all about discipline. Uh, and I think that uh, every person now has an uh, opportunity to build our uh, own brand. Uh, because we have a lot of social medias and people really are interested in flair bartending, in cocktails. Because right. I see a lot of comments about oh, that's so nice, maybe you can teach me, or oh, that's so nice cocktail, I would like to try it. So people are really interested. And uh, sometimes uh, I um, hear um, the opinion that flair bartending is not popular anymore, that it's old fashioned, but I don't think so. I yeah, see in no. social media that a lot of people, they like it and they like, um, it's um, attract their attention. So Absolutely. I think that everybody yes. has opportunity. Yeah, there's a there's a new coming of age of flair bartending. Uh, uh, Rob and I talk about it a lot. Um, it never really died. It just kind of got a little quiet. The mixologist came out and made their big uh, their debut as the mixologist. But now that we all know how to make great drinks, performing behind the bar, especially post COVID and with the industry right now, performing behind the bar. It's just the next easy step. It, it's the line of how it's supposed to have happened. Um, the videos that you guys produce, can you give us a quick insight to how you produce such great stuff? I mean, your studio looks amazing. I've got purple and green and all those bottles. Uh, where, where do you get the inspiration and, and can you give us some insight on how to produce this amazing cocktail or content, uh, that you guys produce all the time? Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, actually you can find everything on YouTube. So, um, like, uh, this is professional shootings and professional uh, editings, uh, and um, it's kind of, uh, um, kind of professional videographer work. So, if you would like to start your uh, blog with a good quality picture, uh, first of all, you should go to YouTube, and you should find YouTube lessons like how to put professional light, how to edit, uh, how to use editing professional programs, uh, etc. So you should spend time, but then you can be like very nice. You can you can be very professional in it. Uh, 
Um, that's why I told you that we started uh, to do this um, in the beginning of COVID because right. we had a lot of time. <laughs> we have, uh, yes, we had a lot of time uh, to learn in for, you know, for watching YouTube, uh, for watching how to shoot the videos. Yeah, that's why. That's great. Uh, you guys just do such an amazing job. Uh, Thank Rob. you. I, I totally agree. It's, it's great seeing people that are passionate about this industry sh share and showcase this industry to new light and bring on new people to inspire them to get them involved. Like from watching some of your videos, I've, I've heard people like, oh my God, I love them. They're amazing. And they haven't even met you yet. And they, they're inspired to, to start picking up their craft of bartending. And I've, I've heard the same stories. They put a camera up and they start videotaping just to try to learn and try to get it better. So, so well done on that. And that kind of leads us to the next question is, uh, with you and I've been like, share with us how you guys seem to maintain this healthy relationship while you both got so much going on and putting so much out there in the world. How do you guys do it? Actually, you know, um, it's not so easy to be a couple, um, and, uh, to make all this stuff together. And sometimes, uh, it's really tough for us, but um, we used to, yes, but we used to work together uh, before we we had tandem together, and we know how to work with each other. Uh, that's why maybe for us it's not so difficult now, <laughs> you know. So before we um, practice, uh, we've been practicing together, and we had a tandem, and we had a lot of performances performances together, and now we make videos together. So just uh, another kind of job, yeah. So. Maybe Tell that's us why about some of your history as a tandem, uh, a tandem couple together. You won Roadhouse. How else have you guys, uh, as a couple, traveled around the world doing flair bartending? Ah, actually, it was amazing. Um, I, I spent um, like uh, eight or seven months in India. Uh, then I back to Russia uh, in 2016. And we decided to uh, make tandem show just for fun with Ivan. And, um, you know, that was funny uh, because um, we, uh, we sold our tandem before it was done. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> it, we sold it uh, for you one sold event. It? I mean, like we sold our uh, performance uh, for one event before it was done. So oh, we had no, awesome. we, we had, we, we had a show, but we sold it. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and that's why, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's why we, uh, we start, uh, we started to do this. And um, actually it was amazing because it was very creative and uh, our friends, uh, choreographers and uh, friends from theaters, uh, they um, helped us to make the show. Uh, that's why it's more like a performance. Uh, it, it, um, it's not like a typical flair bartending show. It's more like performance with idea, with dances, with Absolutely. choreography. Yes, and uh, it was all about creativity and art. And uh, after that, Roadhouse, um, they decided to make tandem, uh, like a tandem category. And we were like, wow, it's our chance because we already have the show, Tandem Show, and uh, we can just upgrade it, uh, put more difficult moves uh, and uh, go to the stage. It was amazing. And uh, that's how we started it. And um, after that, yes, we uh, traveled a lot around the world uh, and we like worked uh, and uh, performed on the competitions and right. uh, it was amazing i like the time i miss the time because you know because of COVID, um all of this um i mean our industry uh suffered and right. uh, yeah now there are not so many competitions right and, and and it's coming back i'm seeing them start to pop up around uh you, you talked about your shows I, I love the fact that you had an opportunity to sell your show to an event uh, before you even went on stage with it, so you had that time to perfect it and get it together. Your storytelling, you and Ivan together, your storytelling while you're on stage, I really, really appreciate it. Something that that had myself on the back. I used to do back in the day when I used to do 
uh, shows on stage, and I would really like to see more of that come back. Can you give us a just a quick insight to how how you kind of plan to st- tell a story on stage as opposed to just show off your cool moves? Um, actually, uh, first of all, you should create an idea. So uh, you should understand what you like to show to uh, the audience. And uh, after that, uh, you can plan uh, your, like, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, after that, uh, you can plan your performance with music. Um, and after that, you can, your, uh, you can put your moves inside of the performance. So f- first of all, it's idea. After right. that, uh, yeah, you can make the blocks with music. And after that, you can put uh, the moves. So never start with moves because... It doesn't uh, start with moves. It's not about your yes. cool moves. It's figure yes, out your yes. story, figure out your music sections, and then put your moves in. Yeah, that's true. I like that a lot. Uh, we have this great documentary coming out. You're going to be at Rob's competition, so you're definitely going to be in the, in the documentary. Uh, what do you see the success very successful documentary goes out to the world, you know, our perfect world of it. How do you see it impacting the industry for bartenders as well as flair uh, with the success of a great documentary? Um, actually, I think the documentary like really will be great. And um, I'm waiting for this documentary. And I think that a lot of people uh, will be interested uh, like to watch this documentary because um, a new wave of flare bartenders, they don't know the history of flare bartending. They don't know right. how it started. And um, it's, you know, it's very important to know your roots and uh, to know their fathers of flare bartending. Uh, that's why I think um, it, it can be pretty popular. But anyway, I will share this documentary. So my audience uh, in social medias, I hope we'll see at least uh, this documentary. Well, we look forward to you uh, leading the new generation of, of bartenders that do flair, flair bartenders, female bartenders, male bartenders alike. Uh, you are a great uh, inspiration to everybody on stage. Okay. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to see, see you being part of the forefront of that. So, Thank you so much. Agreed. And then- Last time you were at the competition, you actually, one of the, the many awards that you won was Best Female Top Competitor. Uh, one of our sponsors this time going into it, Calamity Gin, love that aspect of it. And they're putting up extra money for the Calamity Gin, Calamity Jane Award. So if you don't know who Calamity Jane is, she was like this female Western cowgirl that was very empowering. So with that coming back, um, Hopefully, between you and some of the other female competitors, we'll have the chance to win the Calamity Gin, Calamity Jane Award. And uh, good luck to you at the competition. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Dean? quickly, uh, Olya, Ivan, I know I have to speak to you both. What's next for you guys after this big competition in September? Uh, any big things you've got planned that, uh, that you can let us in on? Um, I, I hope uh, I will start my YouTube channel. Um, it's a big deal, so I, I'm not pretty sure about that. But um, I, you know, like uh, previous few months, uh, I had a lot of uh, comments, a lot of messages, like where where is your YouTube channel? And uh, it's right. pretty interesting for me. So I hope that maybe in few months. Um, I will do that. Yes. Well, yeah, we are looking forward to seeing you in September. Uh, and, and again, we, we love watching your content on, so, on social media, Instagram and TikTok. And we can't wait to see your YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, let us know when it's coming out. We'll, uh, we'll definitely do some plugs here on uh, One Drink With and Cocktail Network Live. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. And uh, really, I'm waiting to see you uh, in September in West Palm Beach. So uh, good luck with your show. I think the idea of your show is amazing. And um, it was really fun and a great pleasure for me to be here to speak with you.
Awesome. And uh, just as we mentioned earlier, the competition coming up September 18th to the 21st. The important date is the 20th because that's the finals. And then as of today, Monday, tickets just went online live at, at uh, Eventbrite to purchase your tickets. It's free to get in, so open up to anybody in the room that wants to come. But if you want that close-up personal experience, $10 VIP tickets are there as well as if you want to reserve a table and make it a group thing. But uh, – Dean will, and I will include the link in the show notes. And uh, Dean, what else you got? So it's only ten dollars for VIP. Puts you in the front row, right? Correct. So, okay, people, let, let, let's take a look at this, peeps. All right, we have a professional film crew coming in who's been on location with uh, Lorenzo and uh, and Lindsay and Colby, and we're shooting a professional documentary. That front row and the expressions in that front row are going to be ultra important for this documentary. You guys want to be in the documentary? You want to be part of it? You get in that front row. It's going to cost you 10 bucks. 10 bucks and you're going to be in the documentary. Uh, you got to get out and see this event. Uh, if you can't participate in any other way, get your way to, uh, to West Palm Beach. We've got some great guests coming down. We've got some great guest, uh, guest um, judges. Uh, a lot of great... Uh, a lot of great flair heroes in the room. So get down to West Palm Beach to check out the improv. Sit in the front row and be part of this show. It's going to be amazing. Thanks, Dean. And then uh, one thing again, we'll give you a little tease. I'm not going to get into it this episode, but get a chance to look at the rules and just look at Flairco Freestyle. Now leave Woo! The Flairco Freestyle round. Bottle flipping, shaker spinning, glass tossing. And uh, maybe you could give us a little hint as to one of the judges who might be on our show next week. Well, um, I usually don't announce all the judges until the day of, because sometimes they change, and I hate naming the wrong thing. But there he is. Mr. Darian Doimo, the the gentleman that won this event the last time we ran it in 2017, the Bartender Shakedown, the first blind working flair competition. And Dario Domo is coming out of retirement in a sorts with his new role with Patron Tequila as one of the major sponsors to come and judge not only Flair, but the Flair Co. Freestyle as well. It's a great big deal. Ladies and gentlemen, get down there. Uh, you, you've heard all of our requests. I know we've asked a lot of everyone today. Get on uh, shakeitandstirredthemovie.com. The, put your email in. If you can afford to, to tip us 20 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever you want on our Indiegogo, great help and support so we can get more uh, buy-in from the community, so we can get better distribution of this movie when it comes out. Uh, we need your support there. And come to Rob's event down in, uh, in West Palm Beach. It's going to be absolutely amazing, and you will be able to get into our documentary. Rob, final thoughts. We're going to take us out with our uh, with our next week's guest. Dean, the final thoughts is we're going to get this down. I'm going to take this last sip and leave just a drop left as I try to cheers you here. So let's let's cheers. Oh, I got to go this way. Yeah. There it is. Really? Cheers, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the last sip on one drink with. That's a new segment, by the way. The last sip on one drink with. <laughs> right? We're always looking for segments. All right, guys, our guest next week is this guy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Olia. She's just awesome. I can't wait for her to lead uh, our next generation of bartenders uh, up on stage. Guys or girls, it doesn't matter. We want you on stage. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Hello, everyone. My name is Dario Daimo, and thank you for watching Cocktail Night for Life. Chris Brown set it up. Oh. Tonight